Those the eyes have it. Now we'll move over to our Citizens Night proportion of the meeting. And I'll again look to our audience here. Would anybody like to address council at this time? It is certainly your opportunity to voice your opinion. Okay, we'll close our Citizens <laughs> Night uh, portion of our meeting and we'll go right over to our approval of, the, or I mean, the discussion of our minutes in council. Uh, Mr. Silk informed me that you will have both the December 6th and the December 11th meetings um, uh, by tomorrow. That'll give you time to review it uh, for Tuesday for you to vote on. That would be the Citizens Night meeting of December 6, 2012 and the council meeting of December 11, <coughs> 2012. Would that close the, to the minutes that you're doing after this Citizens Night, December 6? Had you planned mm -hmm. on no more minutes? My experiment's done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my experiment's done because in the one night that I just chose to do the minutes we had lined up speakers <laughs> for Citizens Night. So, yeah, my experiment is done. Okay. Sharon, are you okay? Are you still good? I'm not supposed to stay for the rest. Yeah, this is a work session now. Oh, okay. Oh, you're all okay. Okay, okay um, moving over to our uh, tax collections council. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll move over to our payroll report. Again, any questions or comments on payroll council? Move to our list of bills and budget transfers. And Clarence, we'll start off with you this evening, sir. Uh, nothing? <laughs> Steve? I have nothing on the bills. Very good. Diane? Yeah, I had um, on our budget transfer, I sent a question to Jeff with regards to the, I believe it was, um, it's on page two of the budget transfers. Um, it was $11,000. Yes. Um, can you clarify what that was for and yes. how was there a transfer $11,000? It's being taken out of the uh, salary line item, which was the uh, employee that was, was no longer with us. Uh -huh. And it's being transferred for a web designer to be able to, des to upgrade the website. Well, I have a problem with that right here is that if we have, uh, uh, due to an unfortunate circumstance, a, a, an employee passed away, so we have a surplus. I don't think it's at their discretion to transfer it that amount. I think it needs to go back into the general fund. Um, so I will not be approving that. Okay. And I think that's what we just discussed. And it's not at their discretion to take leftover money that was never put in there for this due to an unfortunate circumstance of a salary of an employee and do this. Well, at the tune to the tune of eleven thousand dollars. And can this be changed? Is the question. Is this? I mean, because we, this is this is well, not until we transfer it. They shouldn't it. have used it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, there's no money for the contract. I mean, for them to do a contract. Sure. So would that go back to our general fund? Yeah. It, it, it would stay. You know, it would stay there. It would. It would not be spent. It would be stay in the fund balance. Okay. So then that that the transfers back to the, that, that will transfer the general fund then. Okay. The next question I had on the list of bills was um, page 38, um, line item VFIS for 52 dollars. The, the fire department added a dodge. <laughs> An additional vehicle, in, a new vehicle. What is it? What vehicle is? It's not a. What is it? It's not a. It's a uh, truck, I believe. Is it one of their? It's, it's not a. Uh, Fifty thirty-eight. It's, it's it's not a response vehicle. You know, it's not a. Uh, it's not a piece of apparatus. It's a. Uh, what's that? Is it a squad? Yeah, it's a squad. That they the bought. Two thousand thirteen Dodge is a. That they purchased. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's one of the ones they purchased themselves. <laughs> okay. And then we put it on the insurance. Okay. Um, I know I have one more, but I can go, you can go down if you want to get down until I find my paper. It's, it's on the, it? yeah, it's on Thanks. the $5,800 for the Motorola for the fire department. And basically what that was is going to high band, they needed to replace one more repeater. They replaced all the radios and their repeaters out of their funds. This is being taken out of the, the truck reserve fund that they've set up for with, with, this, with us because it had to be replaced. Okay, because I, I remember they said they were going to grant for it. And, 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 then, and they did all but one. And they, this one kind of came up. It just kind of just kind of. Okay, uh, that's what I'm up. saying. I remember them saying they were getting a grant for yes. all this, uh, and they, that is true. 
they, I believe they paid for it out of their uh, relief. And so this is coming from? This is coming from a fund that, that, that was set up and we're in the last fire agreement where when trucks are sold, apparatus are sold, it's put into a fund for future purchases. Correct. And since this was unbudgeted. So this is not coming out of our general fund. It's not a general fund. from expenditure. their purchase, their, their money left there from purchase Correct. of trucks. Okay, selling of trucks. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Is that my last thing on my? Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jim. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Another one? No, it's a Durango. I, I couldn't find my list. Uh, okay. uh, it's a Durango they have for a, a squad. Thank you. Jim. No, sir, I have nothing. Lois? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, one more time for my understanding on the budget transfers. Um, Pretty much in general, I think I was looking at page one on the budget transfers, and um, in this case, it was um, shuttle drivers. You know, we had a credit and a debit. Now, mm -hmm. let's so I understand this. Okay. The debit column here is is showing me. It, it says decrease to shuttle driver. That's a now a credit of two thousand one twenty. It means what? decrease. On an expense account, and it, it kind of say it's kind of opposite. Whenever you're with an expense account, a credit decreases the account, a debit increases the account. So on this one, we have a credit to the shuttle driver for trade shows and, and sales effort. Then we have the debit to tra the shuttle drivers from trade shows. So a from and to yes. from that to the shuttle driver. Correct. Okay. It goes from the credit. To the debit. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, I think I'll get that from this point on. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Statements of payment. Um, let's see. Page 14. Uh, page 14. There was a uh, release of bond uh, for Grace Life Church. Uh, the amount is 54054 <clears throat> I just need to know whether there are any outstanding issues on uh, whether that, you know, uh, there are several, <laughs> but in in this case, um, they did have they were in a flood plain. There were some um, stormwater issues. My question is whether there are any outstanding issues before the release. The second uh, th this would was, this would be the entire bond payment this time. No, it is not. This is, okay, the, so second, this is the second second request. It does not it does not release a hundred percent. There is still remaining money for. Uh, some <coughs> items that have to be completed and or corrected. Would you please tell me the nature of them? Um, I could send you the memo tomorrow. I don't know them off the top okay. of my head. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, let's see if I have any more here. <laughs> I'm going to pick on you again, Paul. Uh, at night. At page 16. Um, I just saw clothing allowance there. Normally, I see host. I know you're, that you're a, a, a park host, but I saw the cl clothing allowance. I know people have clothing allowance within your department. I just didn't recognize you had clothing allowance. Was that I do. shoes or something? For I do. I do occasionally get to go in a field and play around. I directed that no. to him. So I do get a clothing allotment. I don't use my whole clothing allotment, but I do use some of it for safety and or field clothes. Okay. And, it, and it's All within right. our personnel. Manual. If people do outside work. Do have no that problem. Option. Okay, no problem. I just don't see that often, as you say. Um, page 25. Um, let me make sure this is page 25. Mobile health services. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mentioned this, and I know that this is one of the first contracts you're going to take a look at, but when you see a total of 493 monthly this year, I think it was like 600 last month. This is random testing. And then you look at it by departments on the general ledger here. And so you pretty much see the same amount for testing, drug testing, drug testing. But when you, it comes to almost twice the amount for testing grass cutters. Because they are also CDLs. So they, they have the $25 drug test and then they have a $38 additional fee for the Department of Transportation. Okay. And then there's a $100, $110 site fee whenever they come on site, and that's divided on the one, as many as we test that day, it's allocated to each test. Mm. Okay, all right. So that's why there's department, there's DOT testing on those. All right, that's all I had. Yes. Nick. No questions this evening. Ah, no further questions. All right. 
Okay. We'll move over to new business. And that's on 12-5-ST, Astoria, Astoria's <coughs> Properties, LLC. Yes, Mayor. Uh, under new business, uh, this is site plan application. Um, applicant is requesting site plan approval to reconstruct 40,830 square feet of the existing building to create an amatory surgical center as a phased development. The property is located at 4121 Monroeville Boulevard, consisting of 4.4 .4 acres in the C2 Business Commercial Zoning District. The Planning Commission recommends approval with conditions. This is the former Sims building, which was in front of you prior. It was withdrawn by the applicant. It has now come through the Planning Commission, now back in front of you again. And Mark will give you the details. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, sir. Please. Good evening, everybody. Uh, on a later note, I'm pleased to announce that we're going to get a vacant building converted into an ambulatory surgical center. So that will bring some revenue into the municipality, which will be much needed. Originally, this plan was brought forth before the Planning Commission on September 19th was to be acted upon by council in the November council meeting, but they withdrew the application prior to you acting on it. They revised the plan and reintroduced it to the Planning Commission on December 19th. Uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval with a couple conditions that they wanted us to include into the um, resolution. One of them is, is the uh, applicant the Planning Commission requested the applicant provide a internal sidewalk which would attach the public sidewalk along Monroeville Boulevard to the main entrance of the Ambulatory Surgical Center. Mark, can you, you need to adjust. Thank you. Okay. So they have agreed to do that. There was a, another, another comment by the Planning Commission as to whether the streetscape lighting uh, they have requested the applicant to install streetscape lighting. This is not part of the street state 20 business uh, 22 corridor, so they're not required to put them in here. Uh, they're approximately $6,000 a piece. Their current photometric plans allows for illumination to illuminate the public sidewalk. Therefore, I didn't feel that there would be an extra need to, for them to spend an extra $54,000 for these lights. They're on a limited budget now. so. The existing uh, lighting will supply ample lighting for the public sidewalk as well as the street lighting out front. Uh, they've satisfied my requirements, uh, request my letter dated, as you can see in the resolution. Uh, Darren will address some of the comments as far as the traffic is concerned. Paul will handle the comments for the stormwater uh, letters that you'll see attached to the uh, conditions of the resolution. Are there any questions? I just have one question. Are we keeping this on the tax rolls, or yes. are they going to? This is a for-profit ambulatory oh, surgical center. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, this is going to be a phased development here. The first phase is going to occupy approximately uh, 27,091 20, 27, square feet, including the first phase and the uh, air handlers and the a, a emergency corridor. And then there'll be a second tenant build out of approximately 13,000 in the future. We've afforded them a five-year period to finish this project. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Mark? Mayor, I, I seem to recall that there was a question on whether or not they would seek um, to work out an easement uh, with the conjoined property. There is a piece of property that potentially could be landlocked if there is not an easement agreement. Uh, they, they have outlined that in the actual Lois, are you speaking about the cross axman agreement to Miracle Mile or the, or the one office park? The, there's two. There's two issues. Actually. Miracle Mile is what I was thinking okay. about because, well, that, I followed the planning commission meeting, and I, the bottom line is you want access, you want collateral roads, right. and you want safe line of vision. So I thought that that would have helped. Yes, they they stated that they are working on an agreement with the Corporate One Office Park to get a cross-access agreement so they can access the traffic signal. Um, it might not happen in the Phase 1 period, okay. but prior to development of Phase 2, we're going to mandate that they, they achieve that cross the agreement. Corporate one. That'll go from the Corporate I'm in the process property. of contacting the Corporate One Office Park just to verify yeah. that they yeah. are having sure. a discussion. Both. That all, not the Miracle Mile behind the property, you go through corporate run and then so corporate light. one and then you could 
either go to the light or you could go through the back way to the Miracle Mile where PNC Parks or PNC Banks at. Got it. So that'll all be interconnected, which is that's that's helpful. Oh, it would be very helpful. <laughs> yes, it would. So again, any other questions? Darren, did you want to just discuss the some of the issues on the entrance way or anything? For well, that cross access was one of the key issues. One of the comments we did have. Uh, they were originally proposing an a additional right turn lane out of their entrance. Uh, obviously, their entrance uh, doesn't generate enough traffic to warrant a traffic signal or any improvements on Monroeville Boulevard. Um, and there wouldn't be any. We stated that there would be some uh, safety concerns with having an unsignalized access with two egress lanes because then you have sight distance concerns with two vehicles, one trying to make a left, one trying to make a right. They can't see past each other. So we, we recommended that they just keep that as one lane out and potentially either do a separate right out only or pursue a cross access with corporate one office park. I just had a question as to whether or not when that's open, how much more traffic you get through there. So how can they predict whether or not it wouldn't warrant they that. did provide a complete traffic study. Uh, it was Does just that anticipate how the traffic can increase through there as a result of that? Yes. Opening? Because mm -hmm. you know how that is. People will find out there's a better way to get through place that you're going to have more traffic going through there. I actually think the site will afford the cars to actually utilize the light rather than people coming from corporate run cutting through this property and utilizing their egress. You think? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Most likely. other questions oh, well, I, I, I interrupted you one more item I'm sorry um, in your packet the resolution that you see in your packet the square footage will most likely change before Tuesday's night's meeting the, the square footage that's on their plans that were submitted to us at the last week of December we got a document today from the architect with a different square footage and then we have a resolution that has a different so uh, we placed a call today to the architect because it, it ha the only thing it really has a bearing on is the required parking. Mm -hmm. So uh, before Tuesday's meeting, that will all be ironed out and have the correct square footage on it. Uh, so your the, the resolution that's in your packet will probably change for Tuesday night's meeting. From 40000 to no, a the, higher? Uh, that'll remain constant. It would just be the phase development yeah. as to okay. what portion. It's a square footage of phase one. And the the phase one. Has they, they've effect. made some different changes here. Okay. But ultimately, the, the end result, it's still phase gonna be two, it's going to be the same. Um, so as far as parking so long term, we're the same thing. It'll all be developed. Correct. <coughs> based on the square footage, they have to provide one parking space for every 250 square feet based on a medical facility. Right now, there are 15 spaces short in the phase one development based on the square footage of the phase one first development. So we're going to rectify that with them. And the five year for the two phases? Yes. That begins as soon as it's approved? That'll be, begins it when you approve that <coughs> council meeting. Okay. Yes. Or when the resolution's dated, actually. Okay. Okay. One last time. Any other questions or comments? Saying none. Thank you, sir. Mary, if, oh, if I ahead. may request of council, and, sure. Um, the agenda. Um, I have a gentleman here from uh, Penn Future Sunshine uh, for the solar voltaic ordinance. I was wondering if we could introduce him now, get that out of the way. So it's. I mean, if you Absolutely. wouldn't mind. No issues, council's council? Council's decision to do that. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Come on. No problem. Evan? Sure. We can get him on. Thank you very much. Evan, you want to introduce yourself? Sign in. Yeah. If you need anything. Uh, this will be ordinance number five yeah. on your agenda. <laughs> uh, thank the council for the time. Um, as you're aware, I addressed this council about uh, four months ago, um, just to give an introduction into where we were with uh, the, uh, the the uh, municipality's um, participation in, in uh, formulation of a model zoning ordinance for solar energy. Uh, the uh, uh, the region it currently has about 350 solar installations now. Uh, that's actually up from the last time I addressed you. Um, and uh, once again, been, been working with uh, representatives from the municipality to provide the, the, the best tools uh, uh, available um, 
uh, to, to give your municipality the tools to, to address solar energy as it comes, um, which in the long run we hope will save you uh, uh, time, money, and, and energy required to, to take it at, at you know, well, when, it, when it comes knocking on your door. Um, so, uh, Mark, do you want do you did you want me to go through any of the slides uh, or anything like that, or I don't have the facility set up for you to present the slide okay. presentation right now. Okay. Um, Bill presented at the planning commission. Yeah. He just you know summarized what the ordinance was all about for council or for the planning commission. If you wanted to do the same thing to council, sure. Just so what it's about positioning. Yes. So so the the, the model zoning ordinance treats solar as an accessory use. Um, it allows uh, uh, solar energy in all zoning districts. Um, it does uh, restrict uh, um, what we call ground-mounted systems in front yards. It uh, restricts uh, the angle at which a solar uh, installation can be uh, installed on the front facade of a roof um, so as to, uh, uh, um, it, so as for that installation to be uh, what, what has been deemed aesthetically pleasing. Um, and that that angle is level uh, with with the the existing angle of the roof. Um, the solar zoning ordinance provides for uh, screening for flat roofs in in a, um, uh, business districts or or uh, areas where you would have a flat roof. Um, there are provisions and, and add-ons, and, and basically what we've done is is created a template that fits into your existing zoning ordinance, adds definitions. Um, and, and fits into to the existing language so that it would not mandate rewriting the entire zoning ordinance just, just for solar energy as opposed to what it does provide is something that just slides into your existing ordinance. So there, uh, what you would find is optional language that can be introduced um, to, to fit uh, uh, setbacks and current restrictions for so uh, uh, based on your, your current setbacks as defined by your, your, your municipality. Um, at the end of the day, what we hope is that you, you have something that, that is readily available um, uh, set of, of, of zoning standards that allows you to deal with, with these installations as they come, and they will come. Um, we've already seen, uh, you know, like I, I stated before, about 350 in Western Pennsylvania. We have 12 installation companies now that make their business installing solar energy. Uh, this is not something that is just in California. It is something that is in Western Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania um, in general. Um, so I, I believe where we're at now is, is that, that you've formulated some language that uh, that allows us to well, that, that, that allows you to incorporate these these um, uh, parameters these uh, uh, um, uh, this prescription for your free for your municipality. Council has the final draft. Okay, great. I have a question. Sure. If you're limiting the angle of the facade on the front mm -hmm. to whatever the current incline or, or pitch of the roof is, um, does that optimize or allow for optimization of the, um, the solar panels? Because frankly, I I every installation of a solar panel requires specific measurements and specific angling to, to get... Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. So there is an <coughs> optimal angle, but there is a, uh, a, whole, a whole consideration for the installation as well. So you know what we what we uh, uh, we get a lot of discussion of of well you know there's not as much sunshine here as in California. So what the solar installers as a, as a community's response to that is yeah that's true we add a panel <laughs> to make up for that. Um, so with with not being able to have the optimal angle, what the installer will then do is propose perhaps a slightly larger system installation to make up for that lost energy efficiency. Um, so, so maybe instead of 10, you'll have 11 panels. So you're right, but at the end of the day, um, we, we, know, we knew from the get-go that front facades of, of, of uh, uh, homes specifically would be a major consideration for the municipalities that we were discussing this with. And in it, 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 true, to, true to form, that's, that was a concern. But what was not, con uh, and what, what they were concerned with was uh, a, you know, a, a front facade in the community and then a solar panel sort of angled against the roof that made it look, you know, something that clashed with the existing roof line or the existing community. Um, so, so while you're correct, what what the, the the solution to that for the lost efficiency will be to add a panel, or perhaps uh, uh, the the installer will discuss how that affects the installation, and maybe they will look at another roof facade or a small ground mounted system in the back or something like that. So I, I, at this point in time, I'm, I'm open to any questions that you may have, and I, I do have some 
you know, some illustrations that I can pull from, but for the sake of time, it doesn't make sense for me to just start paging through those. I'll use those to address your questions. Do you have um, the, you said 12 installation companies in Pennsylvania. Uh, actually, just Western Pennsylvania. Well, just Western Pennsylvania? Yeah, there are actually about 500 in Pennsylvania. 500 overall? Em yeah, em employing about 4,500 people. Was that due to anything that was made um, easier for the industry to come in? In other words, was there any regulation that made that easier? Sure. We had incentives uh, the last four years, a uh, set of incentives, uh, federal tax credit uh, that, that was utilized. We had a, um, a PA state uh, grant program that was utilized. Uh, there's a, a, a credit purchase program as well uh, that, that some customers uh, have utilized. But what, what I will, will say is what we've seen in that same amount of time is the installed cost per watt, which is how they sort of talk about it, go down significantly. So when we started, um, you know, I've been working with solar energy for going on four years now. When I started uh, in the field, uh, an installed uh, installed watt, uh, installed cost per watt was nearly $8. Now we are closer to $4. We've seen a 50% cost reduction. So while incentives have uh, dried up, uh, if you will, in a lot of ways, the installed cost has gone down so that we are st still seeing, yes, we've seen a decrease in the, in the uh, sort of velocity of, of installations, but we're not seeing uh, a cessation of solar installations. Any other questions or comments, Council? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. Mr. Dice. Yes. <clears throat> I won't address number five since it's been addressed. Uh, first, ordinance is an ordinance to provide for the adoption of a budget containing estimates of proposed revenues and expenditures for the calendar year January 1st, 2013. Uh, I think that's been discussed. Uh, second is an ordinance uh, fixing the real estate tax millage for land, building, and structures for 2013. Third is an ordinance establishing the uh, 2013 fee schedule. And fourth is an ordinance adjusting the salary system for the 2013 for the Monroeville exempt and non-exempt employees. So we'll have to take that off, all, each item off the table, and then they can serve. Well, they, they by virtue, they come onto the table, they're, they're tabled for 30 days. They'll, right. As will Mr. Er and, and I think Mr. Silka said that, I think Mr. Erb's amendment will come onto the table. Uh, Mr. Silka indicated that that was inadvertently left off. It'll be on. Questions or comments, Council, on any of these ordinances as Mr. Dice has Mr. presented Mayor. them? I had a question. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Dice, the amendment to the zoning ordinance with the Ordinance 5, would that be a public hearing item? Yes. So we should amend agendas to, to have a public hearing yes. implemented here? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, my question uh, re related to fee schedules. Uh, so would it, would, it would appear that if you came up with any incentives for revenues to add a new fee for something, which is always a good idea, then you'd have to amend this? Yes. We've done that before. Have, we, have done we done it? Yeah. Often or at all? Y yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So that shouldn't be an issue? Shouldn't be. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? We'll move over to our reports of officials, and obviously, Jeff, you have the big one again. Do you want to have Bruce go first? Bruce? Sure. Uh, if you remember our last executive session, we discussed the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania's case uh, concerning, uh, when I say Com the Department of Transportation versus the municipality of Monroeville. I, Jeff, have you circulated our memo? I have not. Okay. I have not. Uh, if you. I will discuss the figures in executive session with you tonight, uh, but uh, we are going to be recommending that you approve a settlement with uh, PennDOT uh, for the sum of around $84,000. Um, there is also a release attached to it, um, and that will be an agenda item for Monday, or Tuesday rather. And again, I will go over the particulars of this settlement with you in executive session. Council, any other questions? Uh, obviously, uh, 
we'll get more information on that. Yeah. Now we'll go to you, Jeff. <laughs> okay, I just have a few items of information. One is uh, with the UPMC Community Benefits Agreement for 2012, as I was working with Council Person Allison with uh, Sean Logan on trying to develop a formula or a, a dollar figure for UPMC Community Benefits, it was asked from UPMC that with, since they're looking to try to find a boilerplate going forward, because if once they do one, they're going to do probably every other community is going to ask for it, that for 2012 to be good community partners, to give maybe a list of uh, capital items that they could fund in, uh, in lieu of a cash payment. So what I, what, what I did with, with the department heads is we kind of went down to the capital budget items to see what was out there that we could uh, ask for. We put together five options and they agreed to uh, fund $75,000 worth of uh, improvements for us in, on, in two items. One is a sound barrier for the firing range at the Public Safety Training Center, which has been complaints with uh, whenever they're shooting up there in training. And that, that's $25,000 off the capital budget. And another is a, 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 pavilion, a new pavilion in the community park. We figured that was good because not only is that a benefit to the community, but then that's also a revenue producer since we constantly uh, sell out our, our pavilion. So putting that in will actually be a revenue producer for the community. So that's uh, $75,000 this year from UPMC for those two projects. And one was twenty five. the other one was 50 then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the pavilion's 50000 Okay. Uh, secondly, um, one of our main issues in the building is, uh, is our internet service, is having the appropriate amount of bandwidth, and actually we don't, we, we don't have connectivity to the public, safe, public uh, works building where we're supposed to be backing up our computers on a daily or weekly basis. So as we're taking a look at this, we're currently with Verizon with three T1 lines coming in. It kind of is a very inefficient system. We worked with... Uh, Comcast and, and what we found is what we need is 20, M, 20, 20 MBs of internet connection up and down and then we need a 100 MB connection between the buildings. And in taking a look at uh, contracts, we're, we're able to do this with Comcast for $1,700 a month. Uh, the cost, the lowest cost we got from Verizon without any construction cost was three was $4,807 a month for, for like services. So we're going to be able to save $3,000 a month and what we're able to, we were negotiate with Com Comcast is that they're going to do this with absolutely no, uh, no build-out service to us, and we're going to get a free month of internet for doing this. So, for, so going on through the budget, we're going to be saving approximately $3,600 a month, and then getting us the internet that we actually need, because if you've ever used the internet in our building, it's slow. And what we've been experiencing, whenever we have shift change and the cars come in, we're having problems with uh, sufficient capacity whenever they download their cameras onto the, uh, onto the server, and it actually everything kind of shuts down and reboots because we just don't have the capacity. So this is going to give us the internet capacity we need. And what's good about this is that if we do need to increase our capacity in and out, it's simply going to be a switch. It's not going to be a build out. So that's, that is going to benefit us in the long run by switching providers. And Comcast was, was a very excellent <laughs> service partner for that. Uh, thirdly, uh, the congressman had uh, called it the, towards the end of the year that they are not renewing the lease for the office upstairs. They're simply downsizing their, their presence. They have no staff to staff it. So what we were able to do, we did move the mayor's office into that office this week. It's open up there. And that'll allow us not to impact any staff offices. The work that we did on the uh, recreation office was the minimus, a couple hundred dollars. So that's going back online at, as uh, Paul's office. And that, that is a done deal and, and a completed directive. Hallelujah. Uh, lastly, uh, we, we did have two dep deputy emergency management resignations. Uh, Chief Harvey and Chief Reed resigned. Uh, Chief Harvey's letter is included in your packet for the resignation. Any questions or comments on any of the items that uh, Jeff brought up? I just had that. I, sorry. Oh, I just have a question. How do you accept the resignation? How is that done? Like officially in, a, in other boards, we have to officially accept certain ones. Do we have to? How is that done? Like, how is that done? I, I don't believe I would, would, have, would council have to do because uh, it's not an appointment. I just, I just think it's a good idea. If you've got a resignation, the best thing to do is accept it by motion, and then there's no question. 
Yeah, you, you might be right. Maybe we don't have to, given the nature of the position, but I would accept it by motion. Yeah, I was just asking. I have no idea since I never even knew they were appointed. Just, just so you know, Pennsylvania well, law is such know. that Ooh. until you've accepted the resignation by motion and a second and a vote, it's arguable that the resignation can be voided. It, it doesn't have effect. It, what, what gives it effect is when you accept it. So that's what I would So by do. virtue of accepting it, you know it existed. <laughs> you know it's done. Okay. I mean, there are situations and cases out there that talk about what happens when counsel has not accepted and the person then turns a, another letter in saying, I rescind my uh, request for resignation. So the safe thing to do is just by accept. By resigning, are there even a vacancy or is it? Sure, there'll be a vacancy then. Well, I guess that's another question for me. And maybe you can clarify this. Um, how many deputy emergency management coordinators are, are there to you, be? You Do we be pick five? Well, this or two wouldn't need replace, or can we just stay with the three that are left? That's there's no requirement for deputies. Uh, All you need is the emergency manager. So that is correct. So there is no, Clarence. I, I, I jumped the gun. Diane's right. This is a position that's not required by statute. The only one that's required by statute is is the emergency management coordinator. You've chosen to, uh, or someone has chosen to establish deputies well deputies aren't aren't required so i'm just kind of looking at to so we well, know from to follow protocol but i don't even think our do ordinance with the emergency management court addresses the deputies at all are they able to fill it with other people there's no there's no statutory yes, requirement no. to to deal with the emergency management department other than to appoint emergency management coordinator you, you guys have created deputies. That's Who's you guys. Someone. We didn't, I didn't even know they existed until someone said we have five. Well, I have first knew they existed. No, not even on. No. This has happened. Okay. <coughs> well, I'm not sure how that got done. Would, would it be appropriate, Council, if you all would agree to let Jeff look into that? Because I don't believe this Council appointed anybody as a deputy or uh, assistant emergency management coordinator. Uh, who all is left in there? Be a list of who's there. Because I don't yeah, believe that's in our ordinance at all. Remaining chief. Yeah, I, I was kind of just looking. Remaining fire chiefs. The remaining fire chiefs yes. will be there. Are currently deputies, yes. Okay. And just two just dropped out to his yes. chiefs. And then your question was if there's going to be a vacancy to replace them, we're saying there's no established rule of how many you have to have. So could they be replaced? Sure, yes. Could they not? They, sure, yes. They all have to be chiefs. So we only have no, to have No, no, they don't. I mean, they, they don't have to be chiefs. They, they, they don't have to be. Emergency right. responders. Be a How do you know that? Like, where is that? At? Like, where does it say who, what qualifications a deputy emergency management coordinator needs? It'd be in the mm -hmm. statute, but the statute be, it doesn't have to be chiefs because. Okay. And it doesn't leave. You have to how be many a firefighter. No, I mean I was you know in Indian Lake Borough I was appointed as their emergency management coordinator. Okay. And, you know we, it goes from me to Pima to the governor. I mean so it doesn't you know. Okay. And who do they have to be appointed by? Anybody particular, or is it a board that says they're qualified? again? Can I make a suggestion? Have exactly. Jeff please okay, look at no that with Bruce. Can you just get us all this information? Because yeah, we'll we're kind of letting you know what information yeah, we'd yeah. like. What I do is I'll prepare a presentation for the February work session. Yeah, give us that, a total. Uh, is that good enough? That's yeah, just a, just how it was done. How, yeah, how all they're chosen. Done. Who chooses them? What's the qualifications? And you'll work with uh, Bruce on that, then, correct? Yeah, work with Bruce and Doug. Yes, we'll get that done. Is that is that suffice, Council? In, in the process, that, yeah, they're going to look into it with. Okay, in, in the process of this, can we get a, an update on um, the required training that's required? That, whether the required training of the emergency management coordinator that um, is required by statute. Wow, that's really redundant. But um, criteria that that that, that, that the MC. has been that that has been fulfilled, um, and, and I would presume that any deputies would need to have that as well um, and can we verify that they've done that and and included any of the financial yes. disclosure since they are appointed public officials that they've provided their public disclosure as well yep. on the I ethics think you in there, thanks i'm sorry no i was just asking uh, uh, addressing one of your issues i'm not sure where all this is going i think having jeff and bruce work on that is on we'll be able to answer all those legal questions if we're doing it right Another question on, <clears throat> on on bringing up the uh, con the new the switching over to Comcast okay. made me think of all the uh, uh, you know 
agreements we have for services and any of those things and here's my silly question do we do we in the past I think we've been uh, billed for services and they included a tax to a non taxable entity we don't pay taxes on those bills that we have coming from Comcast and from Verizon or any of those since we're since the municipality is a nonprofit status we we not pay taxes. the statutory there are statutory taxes that we're not exempt from that, that, that is absolutely true what municipalities are not exempt no. from all taxes okay are I, I, I will are bring a book I, I'll bring a little book with that it explains exactly okay I from the state's that. I'm position just, I'm bringing it up because I think I, I recall from past conversations that we had been billed for some of those taxes that apparently we didn't Oh. Most taxes, most sales taxes, we do owe. We, we, for improvements and a lot of other things, we don't. But I, I'll bring it in from the Department of Revenue. From the department. Okay. Yeah, we may have been charged the franchise tax, which was basically being charged and given back to us. So that's something. But yeah, we, their statutory taxes, we have no okay. exemption from. We're, so we're fine. With yeah. That. Okay. That's all I have. Okay, moving over. Oh, well. Burn, we'll start off with you with your report. How's that? I want to thank everybody for coming. Happy New Year. Um, thank you for everybody that spoke. Um, I encourage everybody to come again on Tuesday. Um, bring your friends. Thank you. Nick. I just want to wish everybody a Happy New Year and uh, looking forward to working with this council and uh, Mr. Silk in his first full year, um, 2013. And uh, hopefully, it'll be a very productive 2013 for everyone. Lois. Yes, Mayor. I have a couple of uh, uh, items from Senior Center. Uh, this Saturday, January 5th, is bingo, first Saturday of the month. It's a 1 p.m. bingo, and it's a $500 jackpot, as uh, it, and it must go. Uh, in these cold months, remember that there are no hot lunches that would be uh, served at 12 noon, but they do have snacks, and uh, there will be snacks. And, of course, there's always coffee. Try to bring the correct change. A lot of people want to get change, $20 bill for a couple or bag of chips. Just try to enjoy yourself and have a good time at bingo, as always. Um, the uh, Senior Center uh, is also announced something in the January, February uh, newsletter for the Monroeville Senior C Citizen Center that just came out and available at the Senior Center. Uh, there is um, something called Senior Seniors in motion, and you heard me go on about how fitness is important, and I need to really get back to their to their workout room as somebody who uses that as a young sen senior. Um, I wanted to uh, tell you that when you read the newsletter, you'll see something that is a contest called Senior in Motion Contest. The Monroeville Senior Center uh, is here to help you keep your resolutions for 2013, so you should pick up a card in the office start today. Uh, the more chimes that people go to the Senior Center to visit, uh, the more chances they will have to enter into a raffle and win. So here's how it works. Step one is you visit between January 14th and Friday, May 24th. Step two, each time you attend the center and participants uh, go there for very, uh, you know, all kinds of things. There are social clubs, there are Wii bowling, there are activities that are, you know, beyond the bingos that you see, beyond the special events. There are fitness activities, and there are many of them there. So when you're going to participate in a fitness-related activity, just have a staff member punch your card that you pick up in the office. Once you've visited 10 times, you drop your card into the raffle box that's located in the front desk. And uh, then step five, you may pick up another activity card, keep starting the activities up. In other words, you keep entering into the raffle, and the winner will receive a fitness basket filled with all kinds of goodies to keep you on the right track to a healthy living lifestyle. And there will be second and third prize winners. They'll receive gift cards. And the drawing for all of this will be on uh, Wednesday, May 29th, when it's nice and warm again. But get started right away and visit the Senior Center to uh, be part of the Senior in Motion contest. So you're on, Greg. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't think so. Thank you for throwing me out of the bus. JJ. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> yes, I would just like to remind our residents, if I can, this time of the year with the snow that we get, one of the toughest things there is out there from a guy that knows is sitting in the seat of a snowplow truck especially at night, riding up and down the streets. 
trying to avoid yards, avoid curbs, one of the toughest things is going around automobiles. I know that a lot of us need to park out on the streets and it's something you need to do. But there again, if you watch the weather and you see it's going to snow a bunch, you need your street clean, do your best to try to maybe get your vehicle out of the way and give these guys a little easier job. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Diane? On the same track, I'd like to uh, commend the Public Works Department again on a great job, um, especially with how the snow came down, how quickly it did. Um, I heard a lot of comments, and I heard a lot of them, especially um, as compared to some other places, and they came from actually some members of the police department. So um, you guys do a great job, and everyone and everyone sees that, including our residents and a lot of our employees. So um, um, kudos to you guys. Um, and as a liaison um, for the CVB, I'd like to um, note some upcoming shows at the Monroeville Convention Center. This Sunday, January 6th, we have wedding clickers. Um, there will be over 25,000 in prizes, discounts, and giveaways at each show, including honeymoon packages, luggage, shower packages, entertainment packages, reception, facility packages, and many more. Um, the visit could um, benefit your wedding um, budget. So, um, again, wedding clickers this Sunday. Um, we have the Green Bergs Train and Toy Show upcoming on January 19th and 20th. The 53rd anniversary of the Pittsburgh Boat Show, if you're getting ready for summer, um, January 24th through 27th. And uh, the Showmasters Gun Show upcoming in February 2nd and 3rd. Um, also coming in February, if you're looking ahead, is a Pittsburgh Indoor Outdoor, outdoor Home Show, um, the 28th annu an annual um, Allegheny Sports Travel and Outdoor Show is coming, and also the Pittsburgh Fire Rescue and EMS Expo is coming up in February. And uh, during um, the CVB board meeting on December 20th, as I said before, they approved their 2013 budget and did um, earmark um, $10,000 to under uh, community sponsorship for our um, parades, being the Memorial Day and the 4th of July. And they also um, fully paid for our PML membership um, on behalf of the municipality, which I believe is in about $10,000 um, or a little more. Um, I did thank the board on the behalf of the entire council and the community for their support of our parades and for our sponsorship. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Steve. I just want to wish everybody a happy new year, and that's all I have. I'm going to talk to Jeff. I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. I'd like to comment the snowplow crew, how busy weekend they had and how well they did. That's it. All righty, and I, again, uh, Happy New Year to everyone, and if you weren't counting right now, Council, and I want to commend all of them, it's been a proposed $471,500 reduction in some of the cost, uh, and that's not counting the $75,000 community benefits that UPMC is offering. I don't believe that will affect the budget. I think those are some line items that are, are on a wish list, if you will. In capital budget. Also. In the capital budget. So it does save some money there as well. And I'd like to thank everybody for, who did participate and come out. Uh, as many have said on council, please join us on Tuesday. This is your money. This is your municipality as well. So get involved with your local government. And with that, I would like to uh, propose uh, we do have a, an executive session, and I'll read the agenda items. Uh, number one is the Municipal Manager's six-month anniversary. Number two, the Probationary Police Officer Review. Number three, the request for a stipend, Senior Center Interim Part-Time Director. And number four, our Personnel Matters. Do I have a motion to go into mm. executive session? No move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we are in executive session. Let's stay here, we can go back.